In this video, we're going to be drawing a potential energy curve and we're going to be using the values provided to sketch that curve as well as to determine if the reaction is endo or exothermic. So to start, we're going to sketch out our axis. So our vertical axis will be representing our potential energy. And then on the horizontal axis, we'll be placing our reaction progress. So we're going to label each axis. I'll put the vertical axis as PE for potential energy, which of course is measured in kilojoules, KJ for short. And on the bottom, we have our reaction progress. Reaction progress can be thought of as time. However, in a diagram of this nature, we typically don't indicate time with any quantity like seconds and so on. So in this particular diagram, we're given two pieces of information. So the first piece of information that's relevant here is that the enthalpy of the reaction uh, is negative 100 kilojoules. In other words, the heat of the reaction is going to be represented by a drop of 100 kilojoules from the beginning to the end. So I'm going to draw a line to represent the reactants and their potential energy. Since we're not told any particular chemical I'll be very general here and label that as reactants. And then I'm actually going to skip ahead to the end of the reaction and I'm going to put in a line for the products. We know that the reaction decreases by 100 kilojoules. So I'll put that second line here. And I'll label that one products. If you were doing a problem where the reactants and products were explicitly stated, in other words, their formulas were provided, you can write those formulas in on those lines. So in between the reactants and products, we know a collision is going to take place. We know that we're going to form an activated complex, which is going to be high in potential energy. So we'll draw the in-between here. And it's going to be a bump of sorts that's going to go up. And at the crest or at the top of this graph right there, I'll put a star. That star is the location of where the activated complex will have formed. So the next thing to do here is we're going to identify where our activation energy and our enthalpy or our heat of reaction are located on this diagram. So I'm going to input in the enthalpy or the heat of reaction first. So the heat of reaction goes from the reactants to the product. So the change in potential energy of the reaction from beginning to end, that's known as the heat of reaction or the enthalpy. And in this case, it has a value of negative 100 kilojoules. Meanwhile, we're told the activation energy. The activation energy is the amount of potential energy required in order for the reactants to form an activated complex. On our diagram, that goes from the base line where the reactants are located all the way up to the top or the crest of our curve where the activated complex is located. And we're told that that has a value of 20 kilojoules. Our diagram here isn't uh, to scale, as you can tell. Um, 
However, since it's simply a sketch, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go with it. Uh, however, uh, it is a good idea to keep these to scale, relatively speaking. Uh, for the final part of our question, we're asked, is this reaction endo or exothermic? Since we have a negative heat of reaction and our, uh, our products have less potential energy than our reactants, we know that this reaction would have released its energy. Therefore, this reaction is exothermic in nature. And that's all there is to it. So thanks for listening and hope this helped.